so welcome. Thank you for joining me today. If you would like to drop in the comments below, say hello, let me know where you're watching from. We're gonna jump right in because I have a fun thing to do today. I have a fun project and actually it's like all planned out and I'm gonna get to kind of show you step one to done today. So let's get to it so we don't waste any time. Perfect, all right. So you see this little cutie box in front of me right here? This is a box I got at the local Goodwill a couple weeks ago. And this box, <laughs> this poor little box, it was only $11. I mean, it's a great box. It has wood inside, the hinges all work, the lock works, but it was literally covered in kitten pictures. No joke. So it's actually a wood box with a paper layer. The paper had kittens, 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 super tacky, really gross. So no more kittens. We've got rid of the kittens. Let me update you and show you what we've done until now so that we can play a little bit of a game of catch up. All right, because we're gonna have some fun today with transfers, with stencils, with would you bend, and with paint. So many things. <laughs> if I miss your comment when you put it in, I will come back in and watch it after the video is finished and we can uh, answer your questions. If Dixie Bell is on here with me, I might have a moderator and they can also help me as well. Or if you're a smarty pants and you know the answer to the question, you can always pop it in below. But I like to talk and I like to be descriptive of what we're doing here so I don't think you're gonna miss anything. Ready? Let's play. All right, so this little box, Look, you can almost see the kitten on here. Can you see the outline? See, see the hidden kittens in there? <laughs> so this box had like a shiny paper, weird surface. And then everywhere you see this ridge was a really shiny brass metal. So whenever I have a project that has multiple things going on that makes me concerned about how my paint would adhere to my project, I always use slick stick and I'd reach for it, but it's way over there. Y'all know what slick stick is, right? Slick stick is your bond or your gripper for shiny surfaces, for things like paper, things like metal, things like plastic, anything you think, hmm, my paint might not stick to that, you should use slick stick. So yesterday I coated this entire thing, including the metal, with slick stick. Slick stick is now going to give me a really great base to put my paint on here and get it stuck good, all right? I never worry. You can't you can't get it off. Yo, once it's on there, it's on there. Never put it where it's not supposed to be because slick stick gets stuck, all right? So this little tiny box had one coat of slick stick, wait two hours, then add another coat of slick stick just to ensure that your paint is gonna grip properly, okay? And I will tell you right now that all of the products I'm gonna use today are linked above my head. Um, you are more than welcome to click on that link and it will take you straight to the Dixie Bell paint page where you can check out all of these items, all right? So slick stick is on, slick stick is on here safe and good. And I'm gonna paint the back, I left it for you. I left it just for you. Uh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this really moody kind of faux leather finish because today I'm gonna show you the new steampunk stencils, which are fabulous. We're also gonna throw on some steampunk transfer and we're even gonna get out some would you bend. So ta-da, here's your Vanna White picture. Check it out, all of these things. I'm gonna go on this little box. I kinda of have, there goes the wood you bend. I kinda of have this thing about adding um, lots of stuff to tiny boxes. They just make them pop. I like to go big on tiny things because they don't take up a lot of space. And then that way you're not overwhelming. Cause if this was like on a massive dresser, you might be like, well, that's a bit too much there. But then again, you're talking to me who, there's never enough. I wanna put all of the things, all of the places. So let's begin, shall we? So I'm gonna show you now on the back of this box how to achieve this beautiful kind of chocolatey ombre look. It's a really fun look and it's really fast, all right? We're gonna do it together, so let's get started. Today on this project, we are going to be using caviar, which is your blackest of the Dixie Bells blacks, okay? You've got your caviar. We have got some pretty brown. I'm using chocolate today, but if you had pine cone or gravel road, you could probably get the same color effect on it as well, all right? And for the center, to cover up these beautiful kitties, we're gonna go burlap. Burlap is like kind of my new jam. I've been using it a lot lately. I find it's a really good neutral. You're also gonna need a spray misting bottle filled with water, as well as your best dang brush, because it is the best dang brush, and I use it on everything. So. Here we go. I have a separate brush for each color, pretty much. I think I might even mix my brown and my black on this 
just because I'm working on this one small section that I've left just for you. I do these things just for you. So let's dampen your brush with your water. The reason you like to dampen your brush is because your chalk mineral paint, it's kind of thick, right? It's kind of thick. So using that spray misting bottle helps you really get a nice smooth application to your project. But we're gonna we're gonna dirt this up. I like to say that we're gonna dirty it up. We like to make things look old and dirty and kind of scarred. I don't know. I just I would much rather have an interesting finish any day of the week rather than a boring finish. You'll never catch me painting pure white. I don't even know the last time I did pure white. I have done pure sin like sun kissed from the silk line. Um, but that was not boring. That was super fabulous because it was on a massive piece. All right, so put your caviar on, on your edges, okay? I'm not being neat and tidy. I'm not a neat and tidy kind of a girl. Let's just get this chocolate around the edges so that I can show you how to create a really great kind of an ombre blend, all right? So just because I can, I'm gonna use the same brush. Um, normally, if you're doing this finish all the way around your whole entire box, you might wanna keep a separate brush for each color. But for now, I'm just gonna do this and get it on good so that I can show you how to get this really pretty ombre effect. So here goes the caviar. Here goes the beautiful chocolate. I'm just gonna mash it in. I'm painting right over those hinges, over all that metal, remember? Because this metal is covered with slick stick. I would love it if I could get this little thing off my screen so I can see all your comments. It blocks my view. But every time I touch my phone, something weird happens and then I lose y'all. And then I'll cry. So I'm just gonna leave it and I'll read your comments after. All right, so here we go with the chocolate around with your caviar. Now the middle, the middle part, of my piece is gonna be the burlap. So I am gonna keep a separate brush for that because I do want it to be like kind of true to color. I want it to be lighter, right? So you're gonna lay your colors down in your initial pattern. Normally, if you weren't rushing this process because I wanna show you all of the things, you would put these colors down and wait for them to get dry. Today, we're gonna handy dandy heat gun it and speed up the process. We're doing it fast style, okay? So here's my colors on here. Let's give it a blast with the heat gun. Get it a little bit dry so that we can add our second coat to the project. Because on the second coat, that's when you're gonna to start to pull these colors together and really match them up and make them look old and get this kind of really great aged effect, this really pretty stippled effect that you're seeing. And to be honest with you, I don't know if you could get this really pretty stippled effect if you don't have your best dang brush. So if you haven't had a chance yet to order your best dang brush, go get one. Get two, I have two, one for wax, one for paint, because they really, really help make that beautiful cloudy, cloudy finish that you're seeing right up here. It's absolutely gorgeous. All right, so here is my semi-dry first coat of paint. You've got your caviar, you've got your chocolate, and you've got your burlap. What I'm gonna do is add like my second tone, okay? I'm not really doing a full coat because this is still semi-wet. I just want enough paint on here to be able to blend with my best dang brush, okay? So, let me move this out of the way so I'm not going to sit on it. We're gonna put it over here. We're gonna put these brushes over here. All right, so your best dang brush is this big, heavy, beautiful brush. It is 70% natural fibers and 30% synthetic fibers, okay? This one feels like a little waxy. I wonder if I used wax on it. I don't think so. Maybe I wash it and there's a little bit of residue left. I use my scrubby soap to wash these brushes after I use them, and then I sit them upside down like this to dry so they don't lose their shape, all right? On the floor, I have an old t-shirt cloth because I'm gonna work and I'm gonna mash off this paint because you don't want a lot of excess paint on your brush. This is just gonna be your tool to move your paint around and get this beautiful cloudy finish, okay? So here you go, you got your best dang brush. I'm gonna start from the dark. Now see, I didn't let it get dry enough. <sighs> I need to keep hitting it with the dryer. You're gonna move your brush and you're gonna use it as your, your blending tool. 
your paint really should be more dry than this, but like I said, I'm trying to show you all the things. So you're gonna use your circular motion and kind of take that paint and start moving it around. We're gonna start to get a really pretty cloudy effect and you're gonna start to be able to pull some of the paint colors together in a natural kind of a faded way. You can bring your darks up into your lights. You can feel your brush drag. You're gonna to wanna to spray it a little bit. Wipe it off and keep going. Travel these colors around. Travel them so that they get nice and cloudy and you don't really see a definite line. I don't want a perfect circle in the middle because I want this to look old, right? I want it to kind of look like old leather. So the work that I'm doing right here is just burnishing basically those edges just pulling these colors around. I think I'm gonna come in later and paint all of the edges, like all the metal parts, in some form of gold, or at least highlight them with my waxes. But for now, I wanna get this really pretty, cloudy finish going on. So that when you look at it, you don't really know where your chocolate ends and where your burlap ends. So now you've got this pretty, cloudy, aged finish. You can go back in with your black if you want with your caviar and like gently brush a little more if you felt like you wanted a little bit more black to come up. Sometimes I like a little bit more age on my corners. So if you wanted to do that way, if you wanted to wait until it was a little bit more dry and come back in and dry brush some black onto there, that's a really another great way of adding more texture because this piece we're going to build. We're going to build layers. We're going to build stencils. We're going to build would you bed. We're going to build transfers. All of the things, all of the time. What do you think? Throw me some hearts, I can see the hearts. If I can't see your comments, I can see hearts and thumbs up. So that's your way of telling me that you like what I'm doing because I can see those. <laughs> what do you think? Pretty cute, right? So this box is caviar, chocolate, and burlap for the base. All right, I'm gonna put my brushes aside. I'm gonna spray them with water because I'm not gonna wash them right now. And they're gonna sit here until the very end of my video. All right, pretty, I see your hearts. Yay, thumbs up, love it. Okay, so let's move along. Let's move this out of the way and move on to step two of our project today. I'm kind of excited about this. This is my favorite thing to do, is open up all of the stuff on the floor and just start slapping all the things on my piece. The cutest pieces that I've created have just come from opening up all the packages and playing with all the stuff. Like you can get the best look by layering. I want you to not be afraid to layer your pieces. When you're layering your pieces, you're creating something that's individual to you and you're making it happen like nobody else can. All right, so let's turn this around. Now that you've seen how to paint this cute little box, that's all I did. I did that to every single side and top of this project. I'm gonna leave the interior like this because I don't mind it. I kind of like it. It looks funky and rustic and it's wood. Everybody likes wood. All right, so here's the plan for today. We're gonna to talk about stencils. We're gonna talk about transfers and we're gonna talk about would you bends, all right? Let's do some transfers first. And then when I, after I lay some transfer down, I'm gonna put some would you bends kind of right on top of it. I wonder if I can reach my knife from here because I will be cutting some transfers today. And I like to have a nice sharp knife where I'm cutting my transfers around my edges, okay? So have you tried the new Steampunk transfer? I did a really cutie suitcase with this, kind of in the similar tones, because this, this is similar based on that inspiration piece, on my suitcase. If you missed it, you can go back and see it on my Facebook page. I did link my Facebook page above my head so that you can come follow along as well and see all the fun creations that I do. So let's pretend, because I know that you guys have probably seen this before, let's pretend you've never seen what's inside a transfer. So I can give maybe those first timers, those beginners that are watching, um, a little bit of knowledge today. So inside your transfer package, you're gonna have something called a burnishing tool. This is your stick, your tool that you're gonna use to get your transfer image off the paper and onto your product. Inside, you're also gonna have a little silica pack. Don't eat this. Don't let your pets eat it. Don't let your kids eat it. Put it somewhere safe um, to make sure that you throw it away adequately, okay? Because transfers do not like moisture, all right? At the end of the day, that's one thing you need to remember. I would not be able to fast dry the back of this piece and put a transfer on right now. It's not gonna stick well. You want your work to be 
done well and done adequately, you need to know that transfers don't like moisture, your paint needs to be dry, okay? Another thing that your transfers don't like is wax. Whenever you're using any of these products, please don't put wax down before your transfer. Your transfer will not stick. You need to know that transfers can go onto bare paint or paint that's been sealed with a clear coat. Either way, you're good to go, all right? So inside this transfer, and this transfer is huge. It has six sheets, right? Six sheets, that's a lot. So each sheet is different, all right? You've got your little steampunk mad dude right there. You've got another page with kind of like a bikes and some gears and some goggles. You've got another page with boots and hats and cars. One page with like all gears. I love that bug right there. That thing's pretty cool. And then you've got two pages of pipes. See these pipes? Let's do the pipes first, just so I can. Just because I have a vision of like kind of layering them with some would you bends, all right? And you also have an instruction sheet. And this is gonna tell you all the things that you need to know all your helpful handy dandy tips for using a transfer today, okay? So save this, because it's important. You might need it for another time. Put it aside. I saved my tubes because it's not likely I ever use a whole entire transfer. I like to cut stuff up, um, and by cutting it up, you're able to make it go a long way. One transfer might cover two or three pieces. So save your tubes, you put them back inside. All right, you're gonna want some sharp scissors, and you're gonna wanna think about how you're gonna plan your piece. I'm gonna look at this transfer and think, I should put some of these pipes like right here on the edge. So I'm gonna actually go in and cut around these pipe edges where I'm going to apply this to the corner of my piece. I'm gonna come in really close to the image edge and just cut it and design my own steampunk transfer today. So in my hot little hands, I have one small corner of the transfer. Transfers come with two sheets. You have your backing sheet, which is white, and you have your clear sheet, which is the image sheet, which your image will release off of, okay? See it nice and close? You do have to be gentle with what you're doing here. You wanna make sure that you're not um, putting this down and pushing it anywhere where you don't want it. You kinda of have a little bit of leeway, a little bit of room to kinda of move it around, but once you get your image where you want it to go and you push it down, it's pretty much gonna live there, okay? So you're gonna peel this part off, and you're left with this. This is the part you're gonna be delicate with. So I'm gonna look at my edge and I'm gonna see this interior lip right here. Seeing this kind of corner tells me, hey, you should put this right here on the corner. So once you get it where it's gonna go, you can use tape if you felt more comfortable taping it down onto the surface. I have tape on the floor, but that would take more hands than I have on my body, so we're gonna work with it, all right? How's everybody hanging in? You're gonna to wanna to push your transfer and kind of burnish the whole image. This is how I work. I work with kind of like a section of the image and then I'm gonna grab it on the corner. It's always hard to get your finger under the, under the thing, <laughs> your finger under the paper. All you're gonna do is push it down with your little burnishing tool onto the product that you're working on, okay? So I'm taking these little pipes, these little steampunk doodads, and I'm burnishing the image onto my piece. Working slowly, you can see your image start to release from your piece with a clear kind of a, an outline. I always go in right at the edge and give it a good rub because this is where your transfer has to go over a tiny bump, okay? So rubbing that image down, you're able to create it onto your piece, okay? So now that I've worked on this small section, I'm gonna keep coming down. Can you see? I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna burnish this little image over here. It's kind of on the lock, that's okay. I don't mind that. I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna come this way. I'm gonna pull it towards me. You can work from the outside in, you can work from this side in. It's whatever you're comfortable. I often turn um, my pieces around so that I can kind of go at them from all angles. So just rubbing it. This is not hard work, you're not pushing crazy hard. You're just being gentle. You're getting that image onto the piece. It can go over the edges. It can go over the cracks. These transfers are pretty strong and hardy when it comes to being bent and being moved. Some other transfers will crack. 
other companies that I've used, these transfers are like beginner friendly. So once your image is off your paper, you can see that there's nothing left on here and you can take this and just discard it. My next step all the time when I do transfers is I have to take my little fingers and just kind of burnish it down. I'm just making sure that it's, it's touching everywhere that I want it to be. Pushing it around these corners, making sure there's no air bubbles. I wonder if I can pick this thing up. <laughs> it's kind of heavy, just a little heavy. So that you can see how the image is on the corner. Pretty cute, right? So now my image is on here. Well, look, it's over the crack. What do you do? What do you do when it's over the crack? Well, you take your handy dandy little knife. You guys want to come in even closer? I'll bring you in closer so you can see. There we go. Sorry for the jiggle joggle, but now you can see even better. So you can take your handy dandy little knife and you're gonna just take it and run it across the area where the crack of your opening is. So this could be like a drawer front, this could be like the door in a cabinet. By doing that, you're able to then kind of cut your transfer and make sure that you can open and close your spot. What do you think? Pretty neato, huh? I need a fan on in here, but if I put a fan on in here, y'all can't hear me. It's getting toasty. It's getting hot. All right, so let's continue on. So now I've done like a, a partial, like look how much left. So much left, right? So much left. Now I've done this little section right here. You know what I wanna do? I wanna put some gears on top. Let's talk a little bit about would you bends so that I can put my gears on top. Have you heard about would you bends? Would you bend is a product that Dixie Bell carries. They are easy to use. You heat them up, you press your molding, you can bend your molding, you can put it around drawers, around legs, around corners, anywhere you want it to go, all right? Look, it's a fan. Cool myself off. It's all the talking I do. It makes me all boiling hot. <laughs> so you're gonna take your little Would You Bend gears. This is Would You Bend number 515. It comes in this hard little package to protect your Would You Bend so that they don't get broken in transportation, right? So by keeping them protected with this wood, you're able to know that they're safe. So how do you use Would You Bends? Anybody use Would You Bends? If you use Would You Bends, throw me some hearts. Let me know. You can paint them before you put them on your piece or you can paint them after you put them on your piece. Before we started today, I painted a couple of the Would You Bends in some Gold Digger. It's just able to paint it before because I'm gonna dirty them up later on with some wax but I thought I would paint some and stick them on here and show you how Would You Bends work. So when you're using Would You Bends, you need to have some sort of a heat source, whether it be a heat gun or a hair dryer or a hot griddle, something that you can do to heat it and put it on here. Because even though this looks pretty flat, see how it looks pretty flat? It might not be 100% flat and true. You wanna make sure that it's completely flat to the surface before you stick it on. So before I go start heating stuff up and sticking it on, I kind of want to think about what's your plan here? Where are you gonna put these little would you bends? How do you want to do this? Well, that looks pretty cute. Let's do big, big, and a small, all right? So you're gonna heat up the back of your would you bend with your heat gun. I'm gonna put it on the floor, and I'm just gonna heat it up with my, my heat gun in order to make it bendy. Once it's heated up, it's also gonna help your glue and your wood you bend adhere to the surface of the piece. It doesn't take very long. These are pretty small. You can see how they're already becoming bendable. You then need to use your wood glue. Dixie Bell also sells this wood glue on their paint page. You can check it out. And you're gonna put some glue onto your piece. Not a ton, okay? You don't need like, you don't need so much that it squishes off. But the glue's on there and you can stick it on your piece. So here's what I like to do. I like to put it on and I'm gonna tape it and hold it there because sometimes these little suckers wanna pop off before they're dry. But we're gonna heat it up again with my heat gun just to ensure that it's flat to the surface. So there's my would you bend stuck on there. Let's give them another little heat with the heat gun. Not too close, mind you. You don't wanna burn your transfer that you just put down. That's just ensuring that he's flat and stuck on there. So now, within a few minutes, you can take this tape off and you're good to go. Let's heat up the other little suckers and put them on there too. So if you're just tuning in and you need to know which Would You Bend this is, this is Would You Bend number 515. I will continue to paint all of the Would You Bends in the package in gold and put them up on my piece. 
you can use gold digger you can use your um, if you wanted to use your gemstone mousse you could so let's stick that guy on here and tape them up and do one more and then we're gonna play with some stencils sounds like a plan stick that guy here because I want to put enough room to put this little one behind him so he's still warm as well I just heated them both up at the same time I'm gonna stick that glue on and put one right here aren't they fun they just add such a like a nice little punch to your project a nice little 3d value to your project so since these guys are pretty thin I know that they're gonna be stuck on there in a few minutes. If you have any excess glue around the edges, you can take a small paintbrush with water and pull that extra off, or you just leave it, it'll get dry and, uh, and disappear. I'm also gonna be waxing around all of them and making them um, dirty later on. So if there is any extra tiny bits of glue, it's okay. I'm not gonna stress out about it. Let's keep going with my transfers. So now I did that one on the front. Let me look at it. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that one over here. How dry do you think my back of this is? Can I turn it on its back? I think it's pretty dry. I'm going to, I'm going to chance it. Let's chance it. Let's play a game of, game of life over here and see if I can turn this guy on his back. I should probably lock it though, right? That would be the smart thing to do so the lid doesn't fly open. This way, we can work on this section right here, and you can see what I'm up to. All right? Cool. Still with me? Still hanging in? That was a lot. A lot of talking. Where did I put my would you bin stick? Okay. So now I'm going to take this, and we're going to cut it up even more. That's like the best thing about all these parts, is that you're able to just cut and play and put them all over the place. So I'm going to put this guy right here. Again, over top of these edges because they bend really well. It's not hard to apply these guys. So you're going to peel back your backing and you're left with your piece. You're going to want to be a little bit gentle with this until you know where it's going to live and then you can push it down. That's perfect for me. So I'm going to push it with my hand, give it a little burnish. And then we're going to take our tool and we're going to make sure that it's stuck on here. I always like to go over my edges my cracks where it's going to move and meet these metal pieces they always kind of get burnished down first so i'm going to work on this little section this is actually a really good angle for you guys to see how well this releases from the paper so you're just rubbing your image gently as you go along and pulling back you can see that white release Does anybody have any questions about transfers <laughs> I'm right here I'm close to the camera I might be able to catch your question before it disappears If you feel like you need to get your fingernail in just to get right up close to that edge, you can use your fingernail as a tool. It's really, really easy. And come over here and start on this side. Have you used the steam bug transfer yet? Does anybody have a chance to play with it? It's a lot of fun. It goes really well with anything industrial looking, any of these fun boxes. I've seen a lot of people doing suitcases similar to what I did. Some really amazing dressers and end tables. You just have so many in intricate little parts that it makes it a fun one to use because it's so huge. Now that we have the new Steampunk stencil, it's perfect together.
So I'm going to work on this little section right here because this is on an edge. So just gently making sure that my area is burnished and rubbed so that when I don't do pull it this piece over, it is stuck down to the surface. Again with my nail around the edge. Just making sure I'm getting, because there's that little metal piece. And voila. So you've got nothing left on your sheet. You're, you're done with this piece. And now you can see this beautiful transfer. Again, running my finger over all of the edges, making sure that it's burnished down, that there's no air bubbles. How cute is that? Doesn't that look steampunk fabulous? So cool. I really like that. Should I leave it on its back? Is it better for you guys to see this way if I do? No, I think it's better this way. If I do the silk screen stencil. All right, so this is the next part of the project. You can now take your would you bend tape off because I'm guaranteeing these guys are gonna be stuck here. They're not going anywhere. You're all good. Make sure you're careful over top of your transfer not to pull it off. You don't wanna ruin your image. And then we're gonna add some stencil. So who has used silk screen stencils? Have you used this guy? This is brand spanking new. Each stencil comes with three sheets. One, two, three. See these gorgeous images right here? I'm gonna show you today to get the best value, number one, from your stencils, but number two, how to get the best clear, clear, clear image, okay? So inside your stencil pack, there is a small tool that you can use to apply your stencils, if you wish, okay? That looks like this. You would dip this in your paint and you would pull it across because these are screens, okay? That's why there's a sticky back. These are screens on here. This tool works, yes, but it doesn't work as well for me. The, what I have found has worked the best is using a dollar store squishy foam applicator. This to me gets the most clear, crisp images onto my piece. So let's decide what we wanna do. Well, I don't wanna do that one because that's too, too much pieces. I don't think I wanna do that, that's too big. I'm gonna do that key. Should we do the key? on an angle like this, kind of coming down? Or should we do, now I'm torn. What do I want to do today? I could do half here and do the other half on the other side. I feel like that might be more of a, a good balance. Let's do that, shall we? Let's play with our stencils. So now you've got your section you're gonna work on. You're gonna look at this and go, okay, do you wanna cut it up? You can cut this up. All right, because as long as you're saving the backing, you're able to keep reusing. So I'm gonna cut around this edge because these little hands, I don't know if I'm gonna use them or not, but we're gonna save them because you need to save all these parts. So when you peel your silk screen stencil, see this? You peel it off your backing. This is the clear part. Can you see how it's clear? See my, see my fingers behind here? This is the clear mesh stencil. It's very fine and it's very good to use with paint products and not get anything slipping out underneath it. It really helps with any bleed, okay? So I'm gonna peel this off. I'm gonna save this because I want this. I wanna keep this shiny surface because we're gonna wash this. After you wash it, you're able to stick it back on here and reuse the same silkscreen stencils up to 10 times, all right? So I'm actually gonna put it over here, put it behind me. So I'm gonna take this cloth and we're gonna bend it around the corner because you can do that, it's sticky. It's sticky. You can use this anywhere you want. It's really easy to use because of the stick factor. So I'm gonna take it, I kinda of wanna overlap this image a little bit. I'm gonna stick it right there. So now my image is on here. Okay, look, it stays by itself, it's sticky, all right? Can you see? You can see. I'm gonna take Moonshine Metallics and Gold Digger. I love some silk screen with Moonshine Metallics. I'm gonna take my little mesh tool and I'm not using it like this because that's not gonna work. I'm gonna put my finger on it. And when I push it against the stencil, I'm pushing the product through the screen and onto my project, okay? And we're not talking a lot of paint. We're talking like a little bit of paint and building. This is all about building your layers. I'm gonna rush this paint right through and push it through my silk screen stencil, okay? So you're just pushing. 
by pushing, getting the product, a thin amount of product, not a, not a ton, just a little bit, you're getting it through the screen and it's not gonna bleed. Trust me, I'm gonna lift it up real close so that you can see how good this works. The only spot that might have a bit of an issue is coming around this, this big lump. But even then, because it's stuck on here, you're able to really get away with murder on these things. You can do a lot more with a silkscreen stencil than you can do with a Mylar stencil. I should say, I can. <laughs> I can do. Because, you know what? I used to be afraid of stencils and not use them very often because I found them hard to use. And when they brought out these gorgeous silkscreen stencils, I learned that, guess what? Silkscreen stencils are easy peasy. Okay, I'm gonna leave this here because I wanna bring it around. I wanna bring this around my corner and stick it here and work through and work on the other side. I wanna continue my pattern. So continuing my pattern around this corner, again, something you cannot do with Mylar. Oh look, I dipped my dripped paint. You can, uh, you can do this with some silkscreen. Okay, so here's my stencil. I've kind of pulled off the excess, it's all on there. First things first, let's clean up my paint drip because hello, why are we getting messy in here? And take this piece off. We don't want that drip there. There, she's gone. Okay, so now I'm gonna peel this off and you're gonna see what a crisp, clean stencil can do. I peeled it off, I'm gonna either take it and reuse it immediately, or I'm gonna show you what you do. You pick it up and you go to the sink and you wash it with your scrubby soap. But I'm working, I'm working with you. I'm busy, I can't do that. I'm gonna take it and put it into my little pan of water over here. So I have a little pan with water and soap. If you put your stencil in here, it's going to stay wet until you can get it to the sink so that you can wash it and use it again and again and again. What do we think? Look at that pretty stencil. Oh, so nice, right? Is it good? Do you like it? I think it's pretty good. I think it's really pretty. I can see one spot where I put like a little bit too much paint, but I can live with that. If you didn't want to live with it and you wanted to fix it, fix it. Plus, I'm going to be dirting it up and putting um, wax on here. So there you go. So there's one stencil all the way around the corner onto the other side, looking like a million bucks. Let's do another one. What else we got? What else have we got? Let's put our little gear up here, shall we? I'm going to cut them out. And we're going to put them up here. Let's put it right, should we put it here or should we put it here? Where do I want that gold to go? I don't want to do it on the top. Do I want any more gold over here? Let's do one kind of halfway around the corner, up onto the top. I like my projects to look a little bit balanced. So when I look at, kind of sit back and look at where everything's gonna go, I want to have it equal. So there's my little gear stuck up there. Remember it has a sticky back. I'm gonna use the same little sponge and push the product through the screen. By pushing it through the screen, I'm not even gonna have to redip it on this little guy because it's a small stencil. Pushing it through the screen, you're getting it all rubbed in and over that mesh, okay? That's all you gotta do. So cute. Oh my gosh, so cute. So again, you can either reuse this right away or you can put it into the water and save it so that it stays nice and wet until you can get it over to your um, sink to wash. What should we do now? Wanna do another one? Wanna do a big giant key? Let's do the top before I start making the biggest mess in the world. What should we do to the top of this piece? Can you see the top? Good, you can see the top. Let's put a key right here in the corner. Or should we put a stencil? Oh, let's put a transfer first and then put that over top because that would be fabulous. Let's do that. Let's do it. How are we doing? You hanging in? You guys still doing good? Are you enjoying my steampunk makeover today? I'm thinking it's pretty cute. Let's do this creepy bug dude. Let's cut him up and get him down here. Because I really, really like this guy. He looks like super steampunk to me. So 
So we're going to take him and we're going to put him wherever you want him to live. I like it kind of angle like that. I've got my handy dandy stick. I'm just going to burnish the whole thing over, making sure that I go over any edges if there are. Grabbing your edge, you're just going to peel back. Sorry, the trunk's going to move a little bit. It's, it's on wheels. It's on wheels for easy movement. That means it's going to slide all over the place when we're trying to do this. So even transfers like this little buggy that has like a lot of detail in the wings, none of the transfer is a problem coming off the sheet. It always comes off all the way. If you see a tiny little spot where you're like, oh, it's, it's not sticking, go back over it. It'll go off. Just know that you're, you're pushing down gently, just giving it that release, and the image will pop right off onto your piece. And I'll be sealing this entire project with clear coat. it's a box I feel like people might sit on it so it needs to be sealed well I don't want it to have any issues with not being safe okay so there's my image onto the top of my piece looking cute the elbow is not smooth my elbow which elbow <laughs> what you talking about <laughs> so it's on there it's stuck let's do a really pretty key kind of over top of it or should we do a gear and then a key let's do a gear and then a key so again I'm going to cut it out because it's just easier for me to work this way I like to cut up all of my things all the time and that way I make stuff my own you can never actually be like worried about copying anybody when you're cutting everything up and moving it all around and getting it where you want it to go so I'm going to put this gear Do I want it to go over top of the wing or just beside Let's do it right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay my sticky side down, right? Because these have a sticky back. I'm gonna take that same little sponge right here, rub the product right through. By rubbing and then pulling this off, you get a super duper crisp, clean stencil. How fast is that? So easy, right? Let's use it again, because you can use it more than once. You don't have to wash it right away. Let's put one over here, just because we can. So you can come back in and use the same stencil a couple times before you put it in the water or before you wash it. You don't have to wash it every single time. I mean, you're not using so much product that you're gunking it up. You're just really kind of using a thin layer of paint. See that? So pretty. I really like it on the dark. You could probably even use it a third time. Let's, let's see how many times we can do it before we run out of um, clarity or crispness, I should say, because, oh, see, I just touched the top. I think what would happen is if you kept using it, eventually the stick factor is gonna kind of wear off, but the stick factor comes back when you wash it. So this is number three of use. Still crisp, still clear, super clear. That's three, let's, let's, let's play the game. Let's go four, let's see. Let's see if we can get four uses out of one stencil. Again, I'm, I'm moving pretty quick, right? Like I'm not hanging out letting it get dry. We're not gunking up the stencil yet with old dry paint. I'm pretty quick mover. I'm fast, y'all. Very fast. So here we go. This is number four. I'll ignore the spot where I touched it with my finger because, you know, that's what we do around here. Mess it up. That's four, and that's still crisp. I can still see through my screen. Let's see, four, let's do five. I would say that number five should probably be the last one though, because you don't want to let your screen get gunky. You wanna keep it looking, looking good, keeping it clean. So this is number five use of the same stencil and it still looks super perfect. Look at how good that looks. That's crazy. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this and drop it in my water. Remember, I have my little pan of water over here so that I can keep my stencils wet so that I can take them to my sink and scrubby soap them all up. Keeping them this way is gonna help you keep your stencils in pristine condition. 
I've got stencils that I've had for like four months that I'm still using. What else should we do? I'm gonna do one more, a couple more, and then I'll let you go. Are you tired of hanging out with me yet? It's been a it's been a long life. Look, we can put these little gears on. Oh, you no, know we haven't done yet. This is one of these guys, one of these dudes. These are like steampunk fabulous. We have to put him on. Let's put him on. And then after that, maybe I'll let you go. Unless you want to hang out longer. I don't know. You guys are my only friends today. <laughs> I'll hang out with you as long as you let me. Okay. So, before we get started, where's my stick? We got the stick. Let's put him on the top or the side. No, I feel like you should be on the side. There's already a bunch of stuff going on on the top. So again, you're gonna peel him off, throw away your excess, find his home where he's gonna live, put him down, and just smooth it on. You guys, this color scheme with the steampunk is giving me all the good vibes. I'm really, really liking this combination. So I'm just gonna kind of brush over his whole body. Remember, I wanna get him stuck on there. I'm gonna start peeling them back. I think it'd be a lot of fun to plan like, I don't know, maybe a dresser like this for a boy's room, or maybe this thing that's turning on me. Maybe a fun desk. I think Aaron from Bowtie Treasures did a really cool desk with the steampunk. I feel like there's just certain pieces of furniture that suit a vibe. And for me, anything like a chest like this suits a steampunk. I can't I have to hold this chest. I'm gonna hold it with my foot. We're gonna get like a little bit monkey challenged in here. Use my long legs and arms to hold my furniture down. <laughs> I'm using all of my appendages to prove how easy this is. Just need to do this in front of the screen rather than tip it on its side. See the lengths I go to to show you all what I'm up to? So just peeling back gently. This is a bigger image. Still comes off, very easy. Gentle rubbing. And that is all she wrote, folks. Nothing left on your screen. You're all good here. The image is on. You're just gonna burnish him down a little bit. He's my favorite. I like him. He's so cute. He's super steampunk. So that is what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna just continue to add would you bends, continue to add my layers. I'm gonna come in here with my really pretty, probably my gold gilding wax with a small brush and like shine up all the edges. Look, <gasps> oh my gosh, you guys, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna look so good. I'm really excited. I like tiny treasures like this. So don't uh, forget to check your thrift stores for tiny boxes so that you can make your own steampunk fabulous because so far, everything that I've seen with this steampunk transfer has looked so good. It's all looked super, super good. So let me give you a quick recap in case you're joining me late that you don't miss any of the details, but I will be posting this on my own Facebook page. So if you follow the Top Drawer RVA, I linked it above my head. Come on over, hang out with me. I always put all of my stuff up there, usually one or two days after my Dixie Belle Lives. Today, I showed you how to do an ombre blend. We started with caviar, moving into chocolate, moving into burlap. After we finished that, we did that with our best dang brush. Remember, a really big, heavy best dang brush? This is your tool to kind of get that pretty burnished look. So after we did that, I taught you about some uh, beautiful transfers. This is the Steampunk Transfer by Dixie Bell, all located under the Bells and Whistles line. And you can get this right now. It is one of my faves. It's six sheets in here, y'all, six sheets. I'm gonna slam them all on here. I'm gonna put all the stuff all over this box. 
So you can cut up your transfers and put them on where you want. You don't have to use them in the same way that they're laid out on the screen. Do them as you wish. I then came in with my brand new steampunk transfers, transfers, stencils, whoops. These are silk screen stencils that have a sticky back. Remember, the sticky back is what helps it stick to the piece and not have any bleed through happen. Even around the corners, it looks like a million bucks. Um, you can reuse them. I think I did that one, what, five times we said? We went around the whole entire thing. We reused that one little, that one little tiny sticky stencil five times before I put it in the water to be washed. Remembering that you're gonna to wanna to wash these pretty much immediately after use. You don't wanna to wait too long because this stencil is very delicate. Um, and the longer you wait, the more chance you take that you're gonna gunk it up. You wanna wash it, get it clean, use your scrubby soap, let it get dry, and then stick it back on these backings. You can use them up to like 10 times. They last forever. All right, I'm gonna come in here later with my gilding wax, some black wax, all of the things. We did woodie bends. Don't let me forget the woodie bends. 515, right? Yep, would you bend 515? I'm gonna put them all over this piece. I'm gonna paint them, stick them up here. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So that is it for me, y'all. I hope you had a fun Wednesday, hanging out and playing on the floor. I'm working hard. <laughs>